Hi everyone, this is Ana Luisa here from Soma Studio Milano. I'm here with Marlon. Hello guys. Today we are back with our second talk for the series Back to Materials, a series about biomaterials. And we are very happy to welcome product and material designer, Rick Mix. Hello, hello everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi, hello. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Actually, it's uh, it's nice weather today. The sun is shining, so oh, uh, happy person today. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for joining us. We are very happy to have you here. Uh, and just for people to get to know you, if you could uh, start off by introducing yourself, your academic background. Yeah, sure. Um, First of all, I'm also very happy to be invited to uh, share some knowledge of what I work on and what I do. Uh, my name is uh, Rick and uh, my company is called Rick Makes. My, I studied at the Design Academy in Eindhoven, where I graduated in 2018. Um, and what I basically work on is uh, renewable waste, like from agriculture uh, sites and such. Um, to not just burn them or landfill them, but to uh, to make something work with it, just to to see what uh, what you can do with it. I see. And uh, since we are talking about uh, biomaterials, uh, could you please explain to people who are watching us what are biomaterials and how and when did you become uh, interested in working with this type of materials? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, so I think it's very it's a bit difficult to to say what is a biomaterial. I think there are several mm -hmm. opinions about it. Uh, my opinion is that a, a biomaterial is um, able to biodegrade back into nature. Um, but the EU um, has now a single-use plastic ban law that will fulfill in July. And they had to describe also what is then plastic, because you have bioplastics, you have natural plastics, and of course you have oil-based uh, plastics. And I, I think they managed in some way to make a good statement of what is uh, a plastic, yeah. and therefore I can also say what is a biomaterial, I think. And they say a plastic is a material that is chemically orchestrated. Um, mm -hmm. so if, if it can be made in nature by bacteria and by not chemical processes, uh, then we can call it a bioplastic or a biomaterial. And mm -hmm. that is, that's okay to just use as one single time. Um, so that's how the EU sees it. I think a biomaterial is a combination of a glue or mm -hmm. a bio mixed with a fiber uh, or mixed with a plasticizer where a plasticizer is, yeah, it's a natural um, material. Uh, yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a natu it's a natural chemical or, or molecule that mm -hmm. adds properties to the binder. So for instance, it can make okay. it stretch or it can make it uh, soft or hard or uh, it can vary in the properties. Myself, I work with the, with the fiber and the binder and uh, mm -hmm. how I make my biomaterials. Like in a natural way, in a natural reaction. Yes, yeah, and a natural glue, yeah. And uh, we also research a bit about your project, compost boards uh, and material. And we would like you to explain a bit about this project and how did you start it. Uh, if you have any presentations or materials, feel free to guide us through as well. Yeah, nice. I love to uh, talk about my work. So I brought these, yeah. uh, these are just small samples. So for mm -hmm. instance, this is made from um, nice. uh, pepper, wow. uh, pepper residue. Um, in Holland, we have a lot of greenhouses, uh, which is a bit different than other parts in the world where they grow their uh, crops in soil. Um, but because they are so densely populated with uh, peppers, there's a lot of waste uh, coming mm -hmm. from these places. And, uh, yeah, so this is pepper. This is hemp. Okay. Uh, and it's a lot, the color is very light, um, where this mm -hmm. is still green. Um, and this, this is my personal favorite uh, because it's so light. And about 60% of the plant is just waste. Um, ah, so it's okay. not used or it's either burnt or uh, landfilled. 
Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I investigate also in the in the problems that come with the material. So if we talk about the pepper, mm -hmm. uh, the plant grows up um, mm -hmm. and it's clipped with some plastic clips and with some thread, and then they uh, stick it up and up and up and up. And mm -hmm. once the harvest is done, they cut the plant at the bottom and all the plastic and the plant uh, goes out, um, which is a very polluted material, therefore, mm -hmm. that is not able to be burned or biodegradable anymore. <coughs> but they just put it in the soil and they just act like it's not there anymore. So with making materials, um, I try to also come up with some kind of um, way to make money out of your waste so that you mm -hmm. say, it's plastic, this should go to the plastic, and this is fiber, we still get some money for it, and I mm -hmm. hope to inspire agricultural uh, yeah. Uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah, and we saw that after, for example, when you, uh, on your website, you explained that uh, once, like, you can make furniture out of this uh, material, and yeah. then once the furniture is, there is, uh, is not used anymore, it can uh, go back mm -hmm. to soil, you know, and yeah. help nature or even farming, uh, you know, activities. So, yeah, we found that pretty interesting and inspiring to see even the pictures you can show us in your presentation later, maybe, uh, the material decomposing and going back to, to nature. In a natural way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I th this, is what, this is one of my uh, most happy feelings. I go there once a week to, to research mm -hmm. a cupboard that I put in nature and to see uh -huh. what's the process. And we just finished the research this week. Mm -hmm. And it just completely degraded. It's just, there were like 40 worms or something, like eating. Yeah. The nice. So that, that's the best compliment you can get, I guess. Yeah, I, 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 I saw in the picture. Sorry, 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 go ahead. No, I saw in yeah. the picture the worms in, uh, in the natural life coming out from this furniture once it decomposes. So yes, it's really, really inspiring. Yeah, thank uh, you, thank you. And you were saying, uh, sorry, yeah, I interrupted. I have ready, so I can also show you some pictures of it. Yes, yeah. yes, let's see some pictures then from your presentation. Is it, um, is it working? Uh, not yet. All right. Mm. Maybe now, let's see. Okay. Yes. Tell me when you see it. Yeah. Yes, now, now we, we see can... it. All right. So yeah, this is um, this is also the hemp um, compost board sheet. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So how I actually started with my uh, compost board is that I was greatly inspired uh, about our Dutch um, landscape. How mm -hmm. it's like very structured and straight and. Uh, and then I researched into how much waste and what does it mean that we have such a landscape? Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's very practical if you look at New York or Los Angeles, just the way they um, did their streets. It's based on this Dutch um, agricultural sites, mm -hmm. uh, as straight and uh, blocks uh, as the cityscape. Um, and I, I started from there. So I researched uh, what are the waste materials and um, how much is there actually. Um, and for instance, here are some uh, small maps. So on the left, it's um, where tomatoes, cucumbers, and uh, peppers are grown. So it's greenhouses. In the middle, it's vegetables. And on the right, it's uh, cows. And as you can see, we have mainly cows. And that means that our landscape is highly um designed for these cows so there's grass mm -hmm. and there's a lot of corn um, and that means there's a lot of monoculture um, which is not very nice for nature and uh, not very nice for insects or for um, fungi or for uh, trees to live by um, and because they're mm -hmm. used pesticides and there are used um, yeah, to keep this monoculture intact, that you need to qu make quite a sacrifice on all the living organisms. Um, so the more I research and the more I find out, the more critical I am on how our landscape looks <laughs> and maybe should look. Um, 
But yeah, it's still my starting point, so I was inspired by it. Uh -huh. um, and here are some examples of uh, what you can uh, make with the material. So uh, on the left up, uh, it's um, straw. Mm -hmm. um, and on the right top, it's hemp. Um, mm -hmm. And in the, the red one is, uh, is just red leaves falling from autumn. Um, on the oh, left no. are sunflower seeds. In the middle there is um, tifa or cattail. It's a reed plant. Um, in Holland we live below sea level. And mm -hmm. that means uh, some places in our landscape are um, from origin um, swamp areas. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we pump them dry so we could farm more cows. Um, and this has an... Um, the less nice problem that comes with it, which means that there's a lot of gases coming from these areas. And wow. now we are researching how these places can be swamps again, but can still be functional for humans uh, with what kind of plants you can grow. Mm. Um, so it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a starting research in the whole yeah, And it's very interesting how each uh, plant uh, has a different color, Texture. Uh, texture, pattern, uh, it's very nice that you can play yeah. also with that, no? In yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a quality yeah. of the plant that always comes forward to the to the material. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, yeah, I just now realized that I see a lot of, I don't really see the sheet, I also see a lot of story behind it mm -hmm. uh, that, I, that I understand myself mainly, uh, <laughs> I yeah. guess. Um, yeah, so on the left bottom there is uh, pepper, which uh, stays very green because of its leaves that stay green. Oh, okay. Um, and in the bottom there's uh, popcorn in the middle, and on the right there is flax. Um, and if I go to my next page, so if there are any uh, questions, just shoot, then I'll... Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Did you try to mix plants as well, or...? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, for instance, the hemp. Um, it's very rough, but if I mix it with the flex, which is on the right bottom, it's very fine. Um, oh, okay. So with, there, there is a quality that comes with it because it becomes stronger, because the flex um, absorbs all the holes that are filled with air because of the raw texture of the hemp. Um, and it becomes a smoother surface. So um, if you want to paint it, it becomes more uh, smooth. Mm -hmm. As a designer, I want to touch the material. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, <don't. laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. It's not enough just to look. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, and and here is you working at your lab or yeah, uh, or this what? Is my, yeah. yeah, this is my workshop. Oh, uh, nice. I have a sheet press. Mm -hmm. I have an oven and I have. Uh, Yes, measuring tools and mixers, um, where I kind of make a, a paste that I put in my oven and then put it in my sheet press. And um, after it's pressed, it needs to dry. And, and this is basically where it happens. It's about 30 square meters mm -hmm. in the center of Eindhoven. And I'm now looking at some partners to uh, make a small uh, scale up where we can okay. start uh, producing the materials a bit bigger a bit more serious. So, yeah, this is where this is what happened the last two years. Um, mm -hmm. And here's a little bit of process. So this is the yeah. tifa, um, and here we were harvesting. Um, yes, yeah, so on the left you see the plant, and then it's me there with a mm -hmm. small pile of harvest um, <laughs> that I put in my car, and then shred it. So you have okay. the shredded material, and once it's pressed, it's because it's kind of flexible. It's a bit like a pancake, mm -hmm. and you can put it into a shape, and it dries in that shape. Okay. Um, and yeah. how how was the acceptance of the ag ag agricultors? The how, yeah, how was uh, how the Sorry the farmers the farmers yeah yeah how how did they find uh, what did they find about your uh, project? Did you have a good uh, response? Um, yes, it's a bit it's a bit difficult because um, they they basically love what I do, 
and they want to help the way they can. Um, but if you look at their crops, the margins are so small mm -hmm. uh, that if an employee needs to work uh, 10 minutes more to give me a clean crop, ah, okay. uh, the price of the product goes higher and they can't make any uh, margin over it. So okay. they really like what I do, but for themselves, they can't implement it yet because of uh, because of the size of how big the companies be became. Okay. Uh, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. it does, does, yes. And that's also kind of the struggle you're always up against. So yeah. you want to innovate and you want to renew, but the, st the current system is very difficult to move and to change. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, still we don't give up and we just go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here are some uh, cupboards that mm -hmm. I made. The left one is uh, the one we put in nature. Um, and in the middle, you can see that it, it can dry into bended shapes. Mm -hmm. nice. And uh, you also mentioned in a video uh, that we saw also uh, at Isola website and also on your website that you like to create nutritious, uh, nutritious materials. I find mm -hmm. very interesting this concept of nutritious materials. So I would like you to explain a bit about that as well. Yeah, nice. I think yeah. The, yeah, the images explain themselves, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. When I when I started with this uh, landscape research, I also started with material making next to it, and I just decided for myself that it's so weird that we have materials that just don't biodegrade. I mean, I myself, the moment I die, mm -hmm. um, my organs start eating myself, and I am mm -hmm. composed myself just a, my human body is compostable but then the things that I surround myself with is non compostable so yeah first of all I started with I want to make something compostable but then I was like whoa but nature is in such a critical state mm -hmm. that it cannot be just compostable it needs to be nutritious nature need, so it helps nature to yeah to kind of speed up maybe a bit yeah, to regenerate Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, and th and that's kind of this research that I did uh, to see how nutritious mm -hmm. is my material. Um, okay. So, on the top, you can see the cupboard and how it degrades every month. So, every picture is a month forward. Um, and then below, the more bigger pictures are um, what actually lives inside of the material, and that explains how nutritious the material is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, for instance, the worm is eating the material and growing himself, and then from his um, manure, it's more, it's again fertile for the soil where fungi live in and uh, plants are grown. Mm -hmm. um, but also fungi, these fungi live from the sugars that are inside the oh, material. Nice. Oh, very nice. Yes, because we, we study the circular economy and circular design and we learn that uh, it's not enough to not do no harm uh, um, now. You need to do good as well. So yeah. you, you also, apart from not doing any harm to the environment, we should do good to regenerate because basically we have uh, caused so much harm that now we need also to regenerate. So I think uh, this explains uh, very well this concept of the circular design and economy, these yeah. nutritious uh, materials. Yeah, yeah. I, I also think that, that it's always happened. I think if I look at my grandparents or like my great grandparents, mm -hmm. they, they didn't have plastic and steel or aluminium was not as much available as it is now. So. I think we always have been that way also as humans. Mm -hmm. It's also very yeah. natural. It's very, I think, let's say it's very um, nearby ourselves. Yeah. I think it's intrinsic to our nature. If we go back to our roots, really, we can find answers uh, yeah. on our roots and in nature, basically, I believe. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. And uh, just following up with uh, the other questions that are related to this, what do you think are the future of uh, biomaterials? Um, 
and the material yeah. research as well. Yeah. Um, so we, what what works for me very well is that, uh, or let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, no worries. I, okay. okay. Yeah, can you see me again? Yeah, yes, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think future of biomaterials, it's very combined with the past, I think, mm -hmm. like we said just yes. now. Um, but we also lost a lot of knowledge from the past. Yeah, true. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting that you are saying that because we are also researching how people, especially millennials, they are going back to their uh, ancestors and trying to learn some um, skills, uh, like uh, how to craft some, you know, uh, things, because we lost this knowledge, like our great grandparents, they used to do things with their hands. And nowadays we are not really doing that, especially uh, baby boomers, they, they stopped doing that. And then the millennials are now uh, going back to this because they also miss you know the human touch they want really to go back to roots and stay closer to nature so that's why also craftsmanship it's uh on the increasing so much as well in the design world uh yeah, yeah so i think it's related to what you're saying yeah i think so as well i, I think it's also for just when i speak for myself i kind of love if I look at my, I'm from a, just a small village originally, and there every house is built separately. Um, and now I'm living in the city, and there are just houses built like, yeah, I don't know. There's just a Bosco Vertical built here in um, in Eindhoven, and I believe it's a, maybe it's a hundred apartments. I don't, I expect it to be, but there is just that connection that you have to every house in the village is that someone has built. There was yeah. a moment that someone's grandfather started building that house yeah. and it's still there. And now it's just like rows of houses and blocks and there, this connection to what it actually is, a house or mm -hmm. a place to live in with your family and the great times that you have, that feeling is missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh, we, it, hopefully uh, we will yeah. cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. there is a craft in biomaterials, in making biomaterials. Yes, true. Mm -hmm. I think some of those are, uh, we, yeah, it feels very new. It's also very difficult to find information about it. Mm -hmm. But I think once we, once we are able to work with it in, nice, in the right way, mm -hmm. um, there will be a new economy because mm -hmm. the current economy, let, let's say it's the industrial revolution, so it's now about 200 years old mm -hmm. um, and if we have if we are able to make new materials that are clean and can go back to nature to be fertile again then we can have an economy and a system that can that there is no maximum amount of um, yeah. of being pollution mm -hmm. it can yeah. be maybe 2000 years old if we do it in a clean way yeah it's true and uh, now talking about the role of designers, because we see nowadays that designers are a bit like alchemists and activists because they, they work with science and they also share their findings. So to raise awareness, you know, among the design world and with other people as well. So we were wondering if you see yourself in this way uh, and what's the role of the designer nowadays in a contemporary world? Um, I definitely see myself as an activist. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how public I am about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think m my role as a designer is, yeah, it's maybe a bit uh, arrogant to say, but I think it's, in, let's say, designers in general or the cultural section, I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I can only speak for Netherlands because I don't know how mm -hmm. it, how it is in Italy or in other places, but here there's a lot of focus on science and mm -hmm. on numbers and on words and politicians and and 
media and such. And I think the, the cultural section with theater and designers and artists, we are able to shape mm -hmm. a vision or a perspective or to make numbers into a reality where yeah. people can say, okay, I'm very inspired or not at all. And mm -hmm. I think in that way, the building scenarios, um, that's where I see my, my role as a designer, or I think for our cultural mm -hmm. uh, section. And also where, that's also where my activism lies. But okay. Yeah, but it's, it not, is, it's, not, it's not arrogant at all, because I, I think uh, it's true actually, because uh, we design is a tool, is a powerful tool that can help us to rethink everything basically. And that's why designer design is at the heart of the circular economy, really. I mean, but of course, we always need to think in terms of collaboration because without without collaboration, we cannot really go further. Uh, so I think that's the big challenge. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on your own, you, you you're not so you can't really do so much. Yeah, and uh, how uh, where do you see your work going next? Like, what are your plans? Uh, another good question. I think mm -hmm. what, where I would like to go with my work is that this sheet material becomes into production. Mm -hmm. And my plan and with my partners, the plan is to, to build like a small factory mm -hmm. and maybe several places because every place, every landscape has its own uh, local waste. Um, mm -hmm. a local story with the waste and a, yeah the place where you live also orchestrates uh, where what people used to eat what our ancestors mm -hmm. used because on yeah. certain soils certain things don't uh, grow so if you're in if you're going to france there could be lavendel uh, lavendel mm -hmm. um, sheets um, okay. so we want to kind of build out these local factories on several places and uh, with their own materials and I think for me, I want to be a pioneer. I want to research mm -hmm. and review and challenge. Uh, so the moment it works and there are some the right people in control of management and all mm -hmm. the important things, I really want to step out as fast as possible because I need to be inspiring to others. Yeah. And uh, no. talking about... No, no, sorry. Go, go, no, go on. Yeah, so... It, it, for now, it's just a focus on the sheets. And once it works, I'll go into my next step. I really want to work on uh, vertical cities. Ah, OK, nice. Which is uh, yeah. a paradox to what I just said about the, yeah. the vertical towers that you don't have a relation with. But I want to see what if you have a city mm -hmm. that is, for instance, uh, this wide, um, mm -hmm. populated. What if you put it like this and then put mm -hmm. a park around it? Ah, OK, nice. To see mm -hmm. how, how we can use less land as humans and um, more nature. Nice. Very interesting. We will be following up with yeah, your uh, journey. <laughs> and uh, talking about inspiration, what currently inspires you or who currently inspires you? Yeah, currently I have, I have to say I'm kind of in a difficult um, moment of being inspired because there is so little <laughs> to, to go or yeah. to, so little to see. Um, I find Dan Rosegaarde very inspiring, uh, mm -hmm. designer and artist from the Netherlands. Um, but I think for me, most inspiring is thinking of concepts that are challenging. So mm -hmm. like this vertical city, okay. it just, on a certain moment, I'm walking in the forest and I have this idea in my mind and I just can't let it go and I just start visualizing like whoa okay whoa and then this should be on top of that and then mm -hmm. I just nice. and supply and, and then I start uh, checking um, architects so I'm, I'm looking at MVRDV architects now mm -hmm. to see how they just also um, work with societal questions in the neighborhoods and how they integrate uh, nature Nice. And uh, we are almost uh, finishing with our interview, but we want to ask you two other questions. Uh, what's the importance of sustainability and circular uh, design for your work? Yeah, I think it's the core. Yes. My work. 
Yeah. For me, zeg maar, uh, uh, sustainability. Some people have the opinion that, it go, that it's saying about uh, a product that lasts as long as possible. Mm -hmm. But for me, sustainability means that it's um, that nature can work with it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. and again. Yeah. And uh, for you, what's the biggest challenge uh, that designers face to help us shifting from a linear to a circular economy? Um, I'm a young designer. I, mm -hmm. What I find really difficult is um, what's my position in society? I, I don't really feel acknowledged. I mm -hmm. feel a bit... Um, yeah, again, this is just my Dutch uh, feeling about it. I only know it, how it is here in Netherlands, but we don't really have so much culture. Mm -hmm. There's little money going to cultural things. Mm -hmm. um, and that means that I'm also, in a, sometimes I'm in a financial, very difficult situation. So I need to find other ways to stay alive. And uh, that that's for me quite a struggle every now and then. Mm -hmm. So that I mm -hmm. can't focus on my that that's my personal biggest challenge because I think yeah. if I can visualize ideas and maybe future visions then then that can inspire other people again and then all these challenges that are that are needs to be tackled to become a mm -hmm. circular uh, economy I think it's I think it's all possible yeah, <laughs> I'm very yeah it's, about it. it's just uh, Sometimes my position in society is a bit. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not easy, but uh, we we really admire what you are doing, and uh, thank you so much for joining our back to materials talk. And to inspire uh, others. Yes, it's really inspiring what you are doing. Designers, because yeah. we need this. Yeah. This moment. Yeah, we really need people like you inspiring uh, other people, other designers, uh, bringing uh, awareness. And uh, we also invite everybody who is watching to follow up with Rick Makes uh, Instagram and website and see what he's doing. Companies as well. So yeah. Yeah. put the compost yeah. board. And... Should invest in this material, in this nutritious material. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, we will be back with Back to Materials later on. And thank you, everybody that is watching us. Thank you so much again, Rick. Uh, thank we you, hope Rick. We hope to see you here in Milan whenever it's possible. I hope so too. Thank you very, very much for your interest. <laughs> you are welcome. You're bye welcome. bye. bye. Ciao.